Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. This is uh, 2 e 0 iqj Now, last week's video, we looked at login software for open source platform Linux. And I used this laptop here to do the recording. This was an i5. You can see there, I've debranded it. It's got no Windows stickers. The only downside is it's got a Windows key, which I'd like to change for a Linux key. Maybe put a sticker over it. And a comment come in. And I said to, on the reply to comment, that I use a Commodore 64. He said, I'd like to see that. So in this video, we're going to use the Commodore 64 to decode some radio teletype. So this is what I use a Commodore 64 for in my shack. Now, if you want to see me get this thing online and browse some BBS boards, put it in the comments below and I'll do it as the next video. Get Commodore 64 online. That definitely has to be done. So let's take a closer look at how I decode radio teletype. You can even do Morse with the old Commodore 64. So this is a cartridge that we're using. And it's an SWL cartridge from G&G Electronics of Maryland. And at the top here you've got speaker, stroke earphone. you got two sockets for that. So one's for speaker, one's for earphone. And one's for hand key. Narrow, it's 170 wide CW, wide 425 and yes, 850. See, there's a sticker that plugs into the cartridge port on the Commodore 64, and all the software is contained in here. And literally, we're just going to go plug an audio cable in there, then the other end can go into the receiver. That's just a standard audio cable. I think this is mono, you can use stereo one. I've got the one band there, I think this is the one that came actually with it in the receiver. Then we tune the receiver into a Ritchie frequency, and the frequencies are 7646, 10.100.8, and um, 4, I think 583 kilohertz. And then uh, you hear the Ritchie noise, and then this thing will decode it. So let's go and plug it in the receiver and uh, start decoding some Ritchie. So I've got the cartridge plugged into the 64, audio cable plugged into the speaker, stroke earphone, then the audio cable is going to go into my speaker, which is going to go into there, which it is at the moment, take it out, and then we need to tune into a RITI frequency. So I'm going to use 7646, so I'll give it a bit of volume, and normally you can use 7646, tune up or down a bit till you get the best uh, signal, so let's go down. Here, someone's coming through. That's what the Ritty signal sounds like. So that's going to go into the audio jack. There we go. You can see the Commodore 64. Hear it? It's trying to decode something. So let's stick him back on the tripod and try and get our first uh, messages in Ritty. At the moment it's not very easy to read and the text is all wrong. So let's make it a bit easier to read. So we're going to press Control G and enter in 1110. Makes it a bit easier to read. And we're going to change the board rates at the top here. It's got 60 words per minute. I want to change it to 66. So Control X 66. And we should see start making some sense. So 7646 is when we're on now, 10100.8 kilohertz, RY, 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 it means it's idling I believe. Let's zoom in a bit. It's giving off its uh, frequencies, calling CQ, CQ, DE, DDK2, this is BDK2, DD87 and DD9. It's going to give off its frequencies and eventually it's going to start giving off some uh, weather reports. Now you can use any receiver with this, you don't have to use an ICOM 718 on an expensive receiver, you can use a shortwave receiver as long as it's got sideband on it. In fact you could probably use a I can probably use my Texan 660 radio, that'd be quite interesting see if I can I can do it off that. But yeah any any shortwave receiver that's got sideband, cable of sideband are capable of receiving the following frequencies, so 4583, 7646 and 10100.
it's now given off its weather service issued by the Marine Weather Service of Germ Hamburg Biscayne, Western part. So that's how we decode Ritty on a Commodore 64. Works flawlessly. I've tried all different apps on the telephone and little hardware decoders that I've built from solder kits, and none of them have really worked properly. So you get missed results, or sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But with the old Commodore 64 here, this thing does it flawlessly every single time. So it's a winner for the Commodore 64, and that's why I use it in my ham shack. Thanks for watching. Massive thank you to all my new subscribers, and I'll see you in the next video. 2E0 IQJ73s.